I realized at the time that the press, the media, that's not the judge. God's the judge. The only person you have to think about lying twice to is either yourself or to God. The press isn't either of them. And uh, I just figured it irrelevant. I realized at the time that the press, the media, that's not the judge. God's the judge. The only person you have to think about lying twice to is either yourself or to God. The press isn't either of them. And uh, I just figured it out. What's the relationship between Bob Dylan, creativity, and like a Rolling Stone? <laughs> I begin the book by, by telling the story uh, that happened in May 1965 when Bob Dylan gave up on singing and songwriting. He was so burnt out, he'd been on this grueling tour, and he didn't know how to reinvent himself. He thought he had no songs left to sing. He didn't want to be a folk singer anymore, but he didn't know what to write next. And, and so he moved up to Woodstock, and he didn't even take his guitar. He was going to paint and write poetry, but he was done with the music business. He's there for a couple days, when all of a sudden he feels this familiar feeling, the itch of unwritten words, as he put it. And, and then he takes a look at these 25 pages of notes he's scrawled late at night in Woodstock all by himself, and what he sees in these notes are the lyrics to Like a Rolling Stone. The very next week, he goes into the cramped space of Studio A Columbia Records, and on the fourth take, they record those six minutes of raw music that would revolutionize rock and roll. And he understood it. He understood after it. After it came out. Yeah, and, and this is a defining feature of moments of insight. This is one of the things that makes them so mysterious, is that as soon as the answer pops into our head, we know this is the answer. You recognize it for what it is. You don't have to double-check the math or reread the lyrics. You know this is the solution you've been searching for. 